So I've been told that some of the craziest and most risk-taking people on the planet are fishermen. And I thought back to some of the videos I've seen, and you know what? They're right. Y'all crazy. Y'all are crazy. We're gonna watch some more of the crazy stuff that y'all do or come across. Number 20, anglers sailing through rocks. In August 2019, Australian sailors Michael Holt and Larissa Brill had a surreal and unexpected encounter. No, the duo wasn't sailing through cement. They were sailing through a 1,600 square foot big pumice raft. Michael and Larissa encountered this unexpected floating mass while sailing their catamaran towards Fiji. It stretched as far as the eye could see, and it was quite the experience. As they navigated through the pumice raft, the two reported that the pumice stones ranged from marble size to massive ones as big as basketballs, forming a dense floating slick that slowed their boat to a barely moving crawl. As if that wasn't terrifying enough, the absence of the moon's reflection on the water made it feel like they were sailing on a solid expanse. But where did this solid mass come from? Pumice is actually a lightweight and porous rock. It's likely that the pumice pieces came from volcanic activity in the area. While rare, Seeing pumice rafts in the ocean also isn't something unheard of. They occur about once every five years in the Pacific region. However, this particular raft was one of the largest seen in recent times, covering an area equivalent to more than 20,000 football fields. So if you see something in the water that looks like floating cement, it's likely that you're looking at a vast field of pumice. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19, Vegito, the story of the dog who waits at the beach every day for his owner. Now we can all agree that we don't deserve dogs. They're blessings to mankind, really. Those who know Vegito, a small dog in the coastal town of Punta Negra, Peru, would definitely agree. The story of Vegito became known thanks to Jolie Mejia, a visitor to the local beach in Peru. She noticed the dog sitting along the shore alone, gazing at the waves. Initially, she thought Vegito's owner might be nearby, but after speaking with the local residents, she learned the truth, the heartbreaking truth. Vegito's owner had passed away while fishing, leaving the faithful dog to wait by the shore for his return. Day after day since the owner's death, Vegito walked to the beach, waiting to finally see his owner's boat. But of course- And then if you ever had any question of how loyal a dog is to its owner, this is your answer right here to your question, bro. That's, I, I search for that type of loyalty, you know, in friends and life and, and people and, and whatever, like you, that's the type of loyalty you look for from, from people. That type of stuff, bro, it just, it's rare. Of course, he never came back. Despite his tragic loss, Vegito is not alone. In the tight-knit community, many have made sure that the dog is still well-fed and cared for. An elderly woman has taken him in, and other residents regularly provide food and medical attention. They even placed a green ribbon around his neck to signify that he's not a stray, but a beloved part of the community. Yeah, I'm definitely not crying. Definitely not. Number 18. Carrot, the goldfish larger than an adult man's head. You would think this man's photo with a goldfish is photoshopped, but nope, it's real. You're looking at Andy Hackett and the goldfish Carrot. In 2022, Andy was fishing at Blue Water Lakes in Champaign, France, when he got a massive catch, a 67-pound goldfish, which he named Carrot. This bright orange giant is actually not a typical goldfish, but a hybrid of a leather carp and a koi carp, a species known for its vibrant color and substantial size. Carrot, now over 20 years old, was originally introduced to the lake as a guppy by the fishery manager Jason Cowler. Over the years, Carrot became so large that it outgrew most of the fish in the lake. Despite its size, however, Carrot was incredibly elusive, which is also the reason many were surprised when it was reeled in. On the day of the catch, Hackett engaged in a 25-minute battle to reel in the massive fish. He described the experience as surreal, noting that he realized the fish was unusually large when it began pulling his bait with significant force. Following the catch, Carrot was weighed, photographed, and promptly released back into the lake, adhering to the fisheries catch and release policy. Number 17, 
fisherman claims to have discovered the wing of missing plane. On the 8th of March 2014, while flying from Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia to its planned destination, Beijing Capital International Airport in China, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370, or MH370, abruptly disappeared from the radar. The plane, along with its 12 crew and all 227 passengers, was never seen again. Recently, however, an angler came forward claiming he might have a clue about the whereabouts of the MH370's wreck. Kit Olver, a retired Australian fisherman, claimed he found a large piece of the missing aircraft in 2014. Olver's discovery allegedly took place in September or October 2014, just months after the disappearance. While trawling off the coast of southern Australia near the town of Robe, Olver's net snagged on what he described as a, quote, great wing of a big jet airliner. Olver and his crew struggled to manage the heavy and awkward debris, which ultimately tore their $20,000 net. The incident left a significant impact on Olver, who later reported the find to the Australian Maritime Safety Authority. However, his report was dismissed, with authorities suggesting it could be part of a shipping container. Years later, his claim resurfaced once again. The area where Olver made the discovery lies roughly 35 miles west of Robe, a spot he considered his secret fishing location. George Curry, a crew member who witnessed the event, corroborated the story, describing the immense challenge of hauling the massive wing piece. Despite Olver's willingness to provide exact coordinates of the find, the authorities did not pursue his lead. Unfortunately, an entire decade after MH370's disappearance, we continue to be in the dark about the plane's whereabouts. It just, it just makes me think, man, like the ocean is like a black hole itself. There's so many disappearances that have happened that we've never found, never found. Like, and it just leads me to, to associate it with a black hole. The ocean to me now is the way I classify it is just like a black hole, bro. Along with the fate of those aboard. Number 16, man has collected over 1,200 messages in bottles. Wim is a dedicated beachcomber from the Netherlands. And over the past 34 years, he's amassed an incredible collection of a staggering 1,200 messages and bottles. This collection began in 1983 when he discovered three bottles on the beach of Zandvoort, each containing letters with return addresses. After receiving replies from all three senders, Wim's passion for this unique hobby was ignited, and he's been scouring beaches ever since. Wim primarily finds these bottles along the coast of Zandvoort in the Dutch islands, a region known for its frequent wash-ups of oceanic debris. Over the years, the number of bottles he discovers annually has decreased from about 50 to around 20 to 30, perhaps due in part to increased beach cleaning efforts and the rise of digital communication, reducing the need for such romantic physical messages. The messages in his collection range from simple greeting and personal stories to heartfelt notes and even scientific experiments. Each bottle tells a unique story, and Wim has made it his mission to respond to nearly all of them. Wim's meticulous approach to his collection is evident in how he preserves the messages and bottles. He stores the letters in plastic folders and keeps the most unique bottles, such as ornamental ones or test tubes. Wim's collection is definitely one of the most unique and the most amazing out there. Number 15. Fisherman makes an expensive mistake. We all make mistakes. It's part of being human. It's just that there are some mistakes that we can just shrug off and laugh about, but there are also some that we end up remembering for years to come. This fisherman's mistake is definitely the latter. A fisherman in Sydney found himself pouring over $500 worth of petrol into the wrong place. The unobservant fisherman was preparing for a day out on the water, filling up what he thought was the fuel tank of his boat. However, in his haste and lack of attention, he ended up pouring the petrol into a rod holder instead. You see, rod holders are actually meant for fishing rods and obviously don't have any connection to the boat's engine. And so, hundreds of dollars worth of petrol simply spilled into the boat's interior and onto the ground. Not only is this bad news for the fisherman's wallet, but it's also a problem for the environment. Petrol contains harmful chemicals that can contaminate water, affecting marine life and ecosystems. Cleanup and proper disposal of spilled petrol can incur additional costs. 
Well, for any boat owners out there, hopefully you guys will find this as a reminder to always. You know what? And not at the expense of others, but sometimes you hear a story and you'd be like, thank God I heard this before I too one day do something like this. Hearing this story will make me check and double check each time because I plan on having a boat one day. I want a boat. So I'm gonna, this story right here is going to prepare me for the future. That way I check and double check before I go to put petrol, uh, put fuel in it. So that I'm not, because I can see myself doing that. So I, I don't, you know what I mean? I'm not condemning this dude from doing that. That's truly an honest mistake, probably. So yeah, I can see myself doing that. Pump gas into the tank. Number 14, the mystery of the ghost ship of North Carolina, Carol A. Deering. Carol A. Deering set sail from Norfolk, Virginia, bound for Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in late August 1920. Captained by William H. Merritt, the vessel was on a routine cargo run. However, Merritt fell ill and was replaced by Captain Willis B. Wormel in Delaware. The ship completed its delivery in Brazil and began its return journey in December 1920. By January 1921, the Deering had been spotted by several sailors along the eastern seaboard, with the last confirmed sighting being by the Cape Lookout Lightship in North Carolina on the 28th of January that year. However, one of the last sightings was an account of a lighthouse keeper who claimed that the man he had seen aboard the Deering didn't resemble Captain Wormel. The man aboard told the lighthouse keeper that it had lost its anchors. The incident was reported, but this was the last time anyone saw the crew alive. Days later, the Carol A. Deering was found aground at Diamond Shoals, a notorious area for shipwrecks near Cape Hatteras. When the Coast Guard arrived to investigate, they found the ship completely deserted. The sails were set, the lifeboats were missing, and personal belongings, including navigation equipment and the ship's logs, were gone. The eerie thing about the shipwreck is that the food was found on the stove as if the crew hastily fled. An extensive investigation and search were done, but the government failed to find any trace of the ghost ship. Number 13. A Fisherman's 13-Foot-Long Friend Humans are astonishingly capable of befriending wild creatures. We've managed to somehow domesticate cats, after all. An angler in Indonesia, however, befriended quite a monstrous creature, a 13-foot saltwater crocodile. Ambo, who resides in a small village in South Sulawesi, first... And the fact that we're sitting here saying that he befriended. You didn't befriend no gator, bro. I'm sorry. I, let me be the one to break it to you. You know that whole risk taker thing I talked about in the beginning of the video? This is a prime example right here, man. Are some of the craziest and risk takers are you fishermen are. Bro, you did not. That gator, whenever it decides or sees fit or ha doesn't have a use for you no more, will turn on you. Fam, that is not your friend. Just encountered the crocodile, which he affectionately named Riska, several years ago. Unlike typical encounters between humans and crocodiles that often end in conflict or tragedy, Ambo's interaction with Riska was quite friendly. According to Ambo, rather than being aggressive, Riska was more curious and inquisitive. And so, Ambo decided to feed Riska. Initially, he was incredibly cautious. Soon enough, this began a routine. Ambo noticed that Riska exhibited a calm demeanor and appeared to recognize him, often approaching his boat in a non-threatening manner. The angler began to develop a friendly relationship with Riska, much to the amusement of the villagers. Now, while this friendly relationship is rare, it's not exactly unprecedented. Crocodiles might be portrayed as voracious and mindless eaters, but they've actually been observed to exhibit high levels of intelligence and can develop bonds with humans especially when food is involved. However, this isn't a sign to try and feed the local crocodile lurking in your pond. Number 12, fishing with otters. It seems like fishermen all around the globe have learned how to interact with creatures in the wilderness. In Bangladesh, fishermen team up with otters. This practice dates back centuries and it involves the use of trained otters to herd fish into nets the practice of fishing with otters is primarily found in the southwestern region of Bangladesh, particularly in the districts of Kulna and Sakira. Fishermen in these areas have long relied on the agility and hunting skills of smooth-coated otters to boost their catch. The otters, tethered by long ropes, are released into the water to chase fish towards the nets set by the fishermen. 
Before this can be done, fishermen train otters, and it's an intricate process. Fishermen typically catch otter pups and raise them alongside their families, forming a bond that facilitates training. The otters are taught to respond to commands and work alongside the fishermen in the water. Despite its charm, the tradition of fishing with otters is under threat. In time, this fishing technique might soon disappear. Number 11. The slender, pointy fish that can pierce through skin. Did you know that there's a creature in the ocean that can literally pierce through skin? This is the needlefish, a slender, sleek predator known for its impressive speed and sharp snout. These creatures are found in warm and temperate waters around the world, from the Atlantic to the Indo-Pacific regions. They're easily recognizable by their elongated bodies and long, narrow jaws filled with sharp teeth. These features are perfectly adapted for their predatory lifestyle, allowing them to snatch smaller fish and crustaceans with precision. One of the most fascinating aspects of needlefish is their incredible speed. They're capable of leaping out of the water at high speeds, a behavior primarily used to evade predators. However, this agility can sometimes lead to dangerous encounters with humans, especially in shallow waters where their leaps can sometimes cause accidental injuries. Number 10. One in a million cotton candy lobster. In 2021, Bill Coppersmith won the lottery, the fishing lottery to be exact. Bill was fishing near Casco Bay when he suddenly caught a lobster, one estimated to be one in a million. What made this lobster rare is its color. Unlike other lobsters, this one has a striking iridescent blue and pink shell. Due to its appearance, it was called the cotton candy lobster. This unique coloration is caused by a genetic mutation that results in a mix of pigments that reflect light in a stunning array of hues. Unlike the typical dark greenish-brown lobsters commonly found in the waters off Maine, this lobster stands out with its vibrant and unusual appearance. Bill immediately recognized the rarity of the lobster he caught. And so, instead of selling it or eating it, he named the lobster after his granddaughter, and now it's known as Hattie. They're now taking care of the lobster in their very own aquarium. Number 9. Fisherman Captures Living Dinosaur In 2022, a fishing guide reeled in something incredible, a living dinosaur. Well, technically speaking, what he caught isn't an actual dinosaur. But aside from birds, these creatures are among the closest creatures to dinosaurs that are still alive today. While fishing in the waters of Canada's Fraser River, Jean-Francois Besson caught a 10.5-foot-long white sturgeon. You see, not only are these enormous creatures known for being the largest freshwater fish in North America, but they're also old, dating back to over 200 million years ago, when the dinosaurs still roamed our planet. With their age, these creatures are known as living fossils. They can grow over 20 feet in length and live for more than 100 years. After successfully capturing the sturgeon, Besson and his team carefully measured and tagged the fish before releasing it back into the water. After all, these creatures are among the most unique animals in freshwater bodies all around the globe. Tagging efforts are just one of the many things carried out by volunteers to conserve and monitor the numbers of the sturgeon population in the Fraser River. So if you see one of these creatures in the water, consider yourself lucky, as they're among the most amazing creatures you can find. Number 8. A Virgin Mary Statue in the River In early June, back in 2020, the Spanish fisherman accidentally found something that he didn't expect, a moss-covered river rock. The statue, believed to date back to the 14th or 15th century, was discovered in surprisingly good condition, given its time underwater. The statue allegedly mysteriously washed up on the banks of the Saar River in the Galician territory of northwestern Spain. Upon discovering the statue, the fishermen contacted local authorities, who then alerted the regional archaeological team. Officials at the local Museum of Pilgrimage in Santiago in Santiago de Compostela were the first to confirm that the statue is indeed a religious sculpture of the Virgin Mary and her child, Jesus. Unfortunately, the face of the Virgin is gone, along with the head of the child. Even so, this statue is still one of the most significant finds in the region. Number 7. Researchers encounter one of the most bizarre creatures on the planet. In 2017, P. 
people aboard a Portuguese trawler off the Algarve coast chanced upon a rare and terrifying creature, a frilled shark. Just like the sturgeon, frilled sharks are dubbed living fossils as they've been around since the Cretaceous period, which was around 65.6 million years ago. You see, it's rare to encounter this creature in the wild. These creatures usually reside at depths of between 400 and 4,200 feet. This means they're rarely seen on the surface. Seeing the frilled shark up close can be quite shocking. Its appearance alone is enough to prove that it's been roaming our planet for a long time. Its mouth is lined with 300 needle-sharp trident-shaped teeth arranged in 25 rows, perfectly adapted for catching and swallowing prey whole. Now, frilled sharks... See, what they need to give us is the exact date that they found this or they came across this fish or they caught it. The exact date, because then we can cross-reference that with if any major disasters in that area, natural disasters happen. Because this could be a sign when, when they sh start to float up or, or not at the depths that they're normally at, then that can, that can let us know something's about to happen. So we need to figure out when they caught this and look back and see during that time did anything happen catastrophic. Sharks have been caught in the past, but this particular frilled shark is one of the only specimens caught alive. With most frilled shark not making it to the laboratory alive, this live specimen gave researchers a rare opportunity to learn more about these elusive creatures. Number 6. Whale Vomit Worth Millions of Dollars Four years ago, a struggling Thai fisherman's life turned around when he discovered one of the most expensive and rarest gifts of the ocean, whale vomit. Also known as ambergris, whale vomit is known as something incredibly valuable. It starts as a secretion in the whale's intestines to ease the passage of hard, sharp objects. Over time, it's expelled from the whale and can float in the ocean for years before washing ashore. It might sound revolting, but this lump is actually a highly prized substance in the perfume industry. You see, perfume houses use ambergris not only to enhance perfumes, but also to ensure their longevity. Despite ambergris being a valuable ingredient in perfumes, it's actually illegal to catch whales to obtain these chunks. For this reason, stumbling upon ambergris washed ashore or floating in the ocean is considered extremely lucky. The fisherman, upon discovering the large waxy lump, had his find examined by experts, who confirmed its identity as high-quality ambergris. The 60-year-old angler chanced upon a 220-pound chunk of ambergris, and its estimated price on the market? Take a guess. Ready? The chunk had an estimated worth of $3.2 million. Number 5. Poor Fisherman Finds Rare Pearl Worth Thousands of Dollars I know I talked all that trash about fishermen earlier, but I might be becoming a fisherman here in the near future. So I could just go out and look for whale vomit. I don't want to catch nothing. I just want to find whale vomit. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and get enough of it to equal the amount he had to get that money. Yes, sir. Now here's another serendipitous find by another Thai angler. In 2021, a struggling fisherman chanced upon a bright orange sphere while collecting shells. Little did he know that this small sphere would be his key out of poverty. The fisherman, Hachai, found a mellow pearl. Now this pearl is incredibly rare and is not produced by oysters like typical pearls, but by sea snails called mellow mellow. They're highly prized for their unique orange hue and smooth surface. Unlike cultured pearls, which are often perfectly round and produced in large quantities, mellow pearls are natural formations and extremely difficult to find, making them immensely valuable. The angler claimed that the night before he went to the beach to collect shells, an old man appeared in his dreams, claiming he should go to the beach to get his gift. He believes that the mellow pearl is the gift the old man was talking about. It's something he could use to finally turn his family's life around. And so, the family made sure that they would get the highest price for the Mellow Pearl. They were offered around $27,000 initially, but the family refused. The price eventually rose to over $100,000, but the family held on until a buyer offering a staggering $276,000 contacted them. Needless to say, this serendipitous find definitely changed the lives of Hachi and his family. Number 4 an enormous yellow catfish. 
This creature might look like it's CGI because of its incredibly vibrant color, but you're actually looking at a real catfish that was caught by Dutch angler Martin Glatz while fishing in the Netherlands. But why is this fish so yellow? Well, this catfish seems to have a condition known as leukism, a condition that causes a reduction in all types of skin pigment, making animals appear pale or have patches of reduced coloring. Unlike albinism, which affects only melanin, leukism impacts multiple pigments, leading to the striking yellow hue seen in this catfish. It's incredibly rare, so any angler would be delighted to catch a catfish in this color once in their lives. Number 3. Fisherman Finds Bizarre Fish Fossil in Missouri River In August 2022, kayak fisherman Andy Moore snagged what turned out to be a 90-million-year-old fish fossil while paddling along the Missouri River. Moore, an avid fisherman, was kayaking near the town of Yankton when he noticed something unusual caught on his fishing line. Upon closer inspection, he realized it was not just any ordinary fish, but a fossilized one. Excited and curious, he carefully brought the fossil to shore and contacted local experts for further examination. The fossil was identified as a species from the Cretaceous period, a time when dinosaurs roamed the Earth, and the area now known as the Missouri River was part of a vast inland sea. Paleontologists were thrilled by the find, noting that such well-preserved fossils can offer a wealth of information about the species' anatomy, diet, and the environment in which it lived. Number 2. A moving alien stick. There are a lot of weird creatures in the ocean, and this fish is just one of them. This might look like a moving stick or something not from this world, but this is actually a skeleton shrimp. Skeleton shrimp are strange and tiny crustaceans with elongated and translucent bodies. These small creatures inhabit a variety of underwater environments, from tidal pools to the deep sea. These creatures are typically just a few centimeters long, and are named for their skeletal appearance. Their bodies are elongated and segmented, making them resemble tiny animated twigs or sticks, hence their name. The fisherman, while initially startled by the bizarre look of the creature, realized just what it was in the end. You see, skeleton shrimp are also quite astounding creatures. Their unique body structure allows them to cling to algae, seaweed, and other underwater surfaces using their claw-like appendages. This adaptation not only helps them stay anchored in turbulent waters, but also assists in capturing prey, which primarily consists of small invertebrates underwater. What's more, their translucent bodies can blend seamlessly with their surroundings, making them nearly invisible to predators and often difficult to spot for the untrained eye. However, if one of these creatures somehow manages to latch itself onto you, you might find yourself shaking it off, especially if it's your first time seeing it. They might be small, but you gotta admit that they're creepy looking. And yeah, just when you thought you've seen it all, man. <laughs> Nature goes and says, ah, you thought you've seen it all. How about this? And they throw something else at you, man. And they, it, it's just playing with me at this point, bro. It's, it's playing with me. And now it's time for today's topic. Fishermen captured on camera something that shocked the whole world. Since 1000 BC, through the time of the Greeks, Romans, the Dark Ages, the 1900s, and to this day, humanity has been intrigued by alleged half-human, half-fish creatures that reside in the ocean, mermaids. Aside from the question, do they really exist? Some people choose to simply imagine what these creatures would look like if they were real. The most common depiction of mermaids portrays them as creatures with the upper body of a beautiful woman with a fish tail. However, there are others who claim that mermaids look nothing like how they're portrayed in fiction. Rather than a beautiful face and human-like skin on their upper bodies, it's more likely for mermaids to look like this if they're real. Scales, rough skin, and a monstrous face. After all, mermaids allegedly reside in the abyss, where food is scarce and competition is hard. If this is the case, does this photo truly show a mermaid? Or is this photo simply another creative work meant to spark conspiracies? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 1. Mummified Sailor on a Yacht Back in 2016, fishermen off the coast of the town of Barobo in Surigao del Sur, Philippines were baffled when they discovered a yacht floating aimlessly near the shore. However, when they saw what was inside, they could hardly believe their eyes. Inside, 
they found the mummified body of a man slumped over a desk, surrounded by various documents and personal items. His mummified state suggested he had been dead for some time. Luckily, subsequent investigation revealed the identity of the man. The mummy turned out to be Manfred Fritz Bajarat, a German national. However, learning about his backstory made his case more bizarre. For one, Bajarat was known to be an experienced sailor. He had spent over 20 years traveling the world's oceans. His yacht, Seo, had been his home and vessel for numerous voyages. It's a little baffling that he succumbed to the ocean waves. Forensic experts suggested that Bajarat might have perished due to a heart attack, possibly a year before his body was discovered. Even so, this didn't stop the conspiracies from forming. While the story of Vegito will forever stay with me,